Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and here's yet another tutorial on creating your very own uh, Java chess engine. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to focus on letting the uh, uh, computer make a response move to a move that you make. Um, I was thinking about, uh, I'll just run this here, um, about making these uh, pieces uh, move with your pawn, not just jump when you let go um, to the location that was moved. If you do an invalid, nothing happens. Um, but uh, I, for one, am uh, very anxious to get back to the actual chess part. The uh, graphical end of things is not my uh, uh, area of expertise, nor is it uh, uh, nearly as fun for me. And so, at least for the present, I will be going right back into uh, perhaps working on some rating techniques and uh, um, some other fun uh, chess related stuff and none of this uh, graphics. So uh, um, some of you might not feel the same way, but uh, for now I will be jumping right back into the engine and hopefully uh, a bunch of you uh, will appreciate that. All right. Um, uh, and uh, I will never be uh, getting into a fancy graphical interface. I, I must say that uh, if you want that uh, uh, perhaps other tutorials, but uh, that will not be the main focus of these tutorials is the a fancy graphical user interface sort of thing. Um, uh, we'll just get the basics and be uh, uh, done with that, uh, at least for the time being. All right, so let's work on some uh, moves. Now, now there are two options uh, when, you, when you play a game. If I, if I were to run Arena, I will show you. When I call a new game, it assumes that I'm playing white, I guess. Um, but but I can I can choose who's playing white and who's playing black. So when I set up a position, I could say it's white to move, or I could say it's black to move, or whatever I want. So um, those are the basic options we have. And so we need to uh, uh, put in a value for that somehow. So what we will do is say we will have a static int, and we'll call it, um, let's see, just trying to pick something somewhat logical. Let's say human as white. So this will be, uh, and we'll set it initially to negative one. Um, and basically what we'll do is one equals human as white and zero equals human as black. Now you would think I could use a true false, true for human as white, false for human as black, but um, it will make sense later on why I've chosen to use numbers. Um, especially for the graphical end of things. But you could, if you wanted in your own code, change it. But I will demonstrate why this is better. So when I first run my main, um, let's see. I don't want it to start out with this make move. I want to start out with the question, who's playing what? So here is a basic of how to create a question. What we're going to do is create a, this will be all new, object, and we'll put, make it a one dimensional array, and we'll call it option. And we'll make the array, um, let's see, the first option will be computer, and then comma, human. All right. So we create an object option, and then we create, and then we say human as white equals, then we create this option thing. And it will equal, this option thing will return a value, and it will be the human as white thing. J option pane is what we're looking for. Dot show option dialog. Now here we set it to null, whoops, I think that was an M, null, and then um, that's kind of what it belongs to, I suppose. Um, 
Uh, and then we have uh, a question here. And that would be, who should play as white? Put a question mark there. Very nice. And then we will create a title, a string title for this. And that would be, we'll call it ABC Auction. Uh, make it plural. Okay. And then we set auction type to be J auction pane dot uh, yes no cancel so that or uh, no just yes no so we only want two options here uh, cancel it at a third and then I will get rid of well maybe hit oh. yeah I'll go enter and put in all the new st nice stuff there um okay this way uh, I don't have to scroll if I hit enter because remember it doesn't care about how many lines it is it just waits for that semicolon which I haven't yet put in there so this will again be j uh, auction pane dot question message and I'll show you why it'll basically put a little icon you know like you see a triangle or a question mark or whatever there and then this is null we'll leave it as is and then option, that's referring to this thing here, followed by option one. Now this sets the default option. That's what that last one is. So I'm picking number one, human is default in this question. And that sets human as white to that. And then what we will do is say, since this is only run once, if human as white equals zero then and now we can call this whole make move thing that we had before oh yeah add an extra equals there alright then run that initially um, and let's see and then flip board because if human is white then we want to see it from black's perspective because you always want to see it from your side because that you're black so you want to flip the board so make a move and that would be white's move and then flip the board um, and now when we come over here what we need to do is say this is on the uh, mouse released event um, after it releases a drag move instead of just making that move um, we make it we do a flipboard oh sorry uh, we have to call it from the alphabet chess dot flipboard and then we get black to make a move which would be this whole thing so alphabet chess dot make move and then this again would be alphabet chess dot global depth um, and this would be alphabet chess dot alpha beta there we go I think I'm bug free there so make a move and then this and then uh, repaint get rid of it there it just makes more sense up here so it makes a move, it flips the board, and lets the computer make a move, and then it flips the board back to my side. And that is basically uh, what we are looking for. So let's see what happens. When I run it now, it has a question. Good. Human is default. Okay, if I say computer, let's see if anything happens. Oh, I might have to resize it. When I resize, it redraws. So that's another thing I need to do. Is, um, let's see how we're going to do this here. Okay, 
So how do you repaint from another class? I can't just call, um, oops, yes, I can't just flip the board and then call repaint. There is no way of doing that. So basically what you have to do is there's a little trick that I've learned. You have to know the ID number of this user interface, I believe. Um, let's see. So if I did F dot uh, repaint, let's see what happens. See, F is representing uh, this whole thing. So if I run that, and I say computer makes the first move, there, it moved it. So you have to call F. And uh, if you need to call it in other methods where it doesn't know what this F is, you have to make F a static uh, integer. And that will run it. So computer made a move. Then let's say I make a move, computer makes a move. And then I make a move, computer makes a move. If I make a move, computer makes a move. Now obviously it's following no logic whatsoever. Um, I am just, uh, now there it took me. Why did it take me? Because it was in check. Um, but other times it hasn't been uh, taking advantage of me. For instance, uh, uh, it's just not been uh, really knowing what it's good for um, because it doesn't understand logic. So you can see how I'm just, oh, I can't move that piece, you see, because I'm in check, so I move there, and then there, and I'm just obviously not even playing a good game myself, but uh, um, it's definitely uh, interesting. Uh, so that's how you make it work. Now let's try it with com human running first, then I make a move, and computer makes a response move. That is exactly what we are looking for. So you have just successfully made an engine that uh, makes a response move. Um, not, not a good move, but a response move nonetheless. And so the next tutorial, we'll be focusing on setting up some sort of rating system so that uh, the computer can make uh, a logical sense of what it should be doing. All right, so until next time, enjoy Java.